We scaled that back to two. We have some shared space. We have Pilates in one. We have the aerobics room, which is about three to four hundred square feet larger than the space we have now. It will be shared with our spin people. We do not anticipate, because of the size of our club and the volume that we have, that that space will be used at the same time for spinners and, and yoga, for instance. So we believe that this is a great space and uh, it will work very well for us. I think everybody recalls the last time we presented that we took out what was considered in the first presentation the spa or the two massage therapy rooms. We took them out, which allowed us to shift this building way west. So it shifted everything up. This freed up a lot of space here, which allowed us to create the children's room of about 500 and 60 square feet, which was about 80 square feet in the room that we had previously. This room we think is going to be great for young families. It is adjacent to our area here, which is the kids' area, and this is a splash pad. And we think that the, the way that this connects together works extremely well. The pool bathrooms are here. That supply bathrooms for this area, as well as the pool. And we believe that the locker room space is certainly adequate, but not oversized. The same sense of arrival that we had previously is through this long corridor. Um, the kitchen and, the, and this area was now about 700 square feet. It was just over 950 square feet. This we took down slightly by about 100 square feet, but it gives us a lot of exterior room to work with. We've made small changes up here, mainly we, we spent weeks trying to figure out a great location for these restrooms up here, which is both a men's and a ladies restroom that we now have tucked in this corner. We have easy access to the through the elevator here. One of the major changes that we did to upstairs area was when we were changing square footage, we moved the stairwell that used to be right here, we moved it here to the front of the building. Not only will it, we believe it will look really nice in the front of the building, but it also has great access downstairs, and it gives us all this view of the pool area and this huge expanse. This area is about uh, um, 4,500 square feet. It's about 850 square feet larger than the space that we have. So it's not a huge improvement on space, but it's a nice improvement on space. We certainly didn't want to go small. This is what we think the overhead is going to look like. It's going to be a beautiful building. It is very similar in the way it sets to the movie that we showed you first, but the sense of arrival has changed a little bit because we moved the building up by like 40 feet. That was quite the dramatic impact. We have value engineered at the beginning but we'll continue to value engineer as we move through this project. One of the things that we went to on a modification was to take it from a large scale pitched roof to a flat roof. On the south end of it, southeast end of it, which is over here, will house all of our air conditioning equipment and, uh, and be able to hide that from everybody. So, we think that, um, that although we lower the ceiling, it's still going to have a wonderful, wonderful look. And this is a very nice architectural look uh, for our future. So let's talk about price, because everybody certainly was concerned about price. One of the major things that we continued to hear was 
that it wasn't confidence in the numbers. Over the last few weeks, we've spent a lot of time with the builders. We've spent a lot of time with the architects trying to hone down as accurate as we could get what they think they can build this building for. So recently, we got back this. This is the governmental and professional fees. Uh, this, this price hasn't changed, by the way. Direct owner purchases, that does furniture, fixtures, pool furniture, kitchen stuff. Um, that's all wrapped up in that number. The general contractor number, 7,382,000, uh, $7, came down just almost $400,000 from our last presentation. That was based on a number of things we did, including the flat roof, including um, cutting back some or modifying some square footage. Uh, we didn't think we gave up much. Uh, the spa certainly. Uh, we thought that was a good move. Um, total construction cost before the contingency is 9968000 this is where we listened to you. We thought it was really important that we protected ourselves as we move forward. Contingency is a million five. It is almost 21%. Typically, construction projects that go into this style of program do not have 21% contingencies. This is for all of our protection, even myself, I hope. If by chance we get through this project and we don't spend that, it probably means that, that we won't borrow the amount of money that we originally thought. Will that change your payment? Everything you see tonight and what is on the consent form is based on a not to exceed number. So immediately it won't affect your payment. However, it could affect the length of the term if we're able to save money when we're working on our contingency. I think all projects would enjoy having a contingency. That doesn't mean that's free to spend. It means that everything we do, we have to be careful to make sure we save as close to that number as we can. Which gives us a final number of a not to exceed, of which will be on your consent form for 11 million five hundred. The last time we presented this, it was eleven million nine forty. Okay, so we took it down four hundred and four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. We we think that's good. Four hundred and forty thousand. We think this is a good number. As a matter of fact, finally when we were working on this and we weren't we weren't squeezing uh, the general contractor. We were saying, look at the changes we've made. We should receive credits from the modifications that we made as we went forward and tried to value engineer this. So this isn't just a number he pulled out of the sky. He has very detailed programs set up on, on the square footages of the building, on the power needs, the electrical needs, uh, the air conditioning needs, all the different things, square footage with, with, uh, with tile for the pool, with, with uh, tile for the exterior area. We saved a lot of money at the front because originally when they first priced this out, there was a drive, a big drive in the front. We changed that before the, last, the first presentation actually, but we never went back and got new pricing on that. So we spent a lot of time on that and that, that's where we ended up. So we, we do feel good about it. As Frank said, a lot of different teams have worked on this. We've had a lot of things happen over the last few months. I think that we have become a better club over the last four months, presenting, listening, talking to each other, listening, listening, listening. And we've made those changes to hopefully get you to support that. There is one thing I want to talk a little bit about because it has come up. You know, recently we had a focus group last week on the One Membership Program. 
the board approved to move forward and create a voting process. We are currently working with our attorneys to create a consent form. Um, the holidays get in the way a little bit. Christmas probably gets in the way a little bit. We anticipate to be able to present that form to you by early January. For those members that are concerned and feel that they can't vote on this without voting on the other, then there'll be time. This vote tonight is going to uh, begin a 90-day window. You know, it requires 50% plus one of your approval. Once you get that, it's done. We will hold a meeting, approve it in that meeting, and, and move forward. It may very well be if we get the one membership vote coming out in early January, that both of these votes may overlap. Hopefully that will make those people that are concerned about this without the one membership program uh, give them the ability to, to vote uh, and cast it out. A couple of things that are going to happen here. So we have, for your convenience, we do have the opportunity, all our people, looks like a telephone over there, the phone's not ringing. So all of our people are over there and um, everything is, is blocked off in alphabetical order. If anybody wants to vote tonight, certainly they can. But tomorrow morning, we have our consent forms ready, we have our packet ready. And in that packet is going to come the consent form. There is a yes and no box for you to check, okay? And certainly we ask you to sign it. Within that, you'll have all the exhibits that we looked at today. Exhibit A is the site plan that we reviewed. Exhibit B is the lower level. Exhibit C is the upper level. Exhibit D is the overall picture of, of the uh, facility. And exhibit E is the financial that we just presented to you. Those will all be in the packet. If by chance your property is owned by multiple owners, or your property is in a partnership, a trust, an LLC, or a corporation, within that packet is a voting certificate that you must sign off on. Kathy, all the people have, who has to sign that voting packet? The designated member. This is important. It's important that we have this in your file as well. If anybody changes their status on their home, they need to let us know. So if by chance this is not the case, then disregard the voting certificate. You don't have to do anything with it. So how do you vote? For your convenience, as I said, our team is there if you'd like to vote tonight. We'd love to have you vote. If you choose to take it home, you can drop them off at our administrative office. And for members who are not here tonight, packages will be mailed tomorrow with a return envelope. We are filming this. This will go on the website tomorrow afternoon. We believe it's really, really important. What happens in the future? So, <clears throat> we did not put up a time schedule here because we don't know how long this process is going to take. We would like to think it doesn't take that long, actually. We would like to think that through all the work that we've done and all the work that you've done, that you have come up with an idea on whether you think this is the best scenario for the future of our club. I will tell you that all the committees feel that way and the board feels that way. And honestly, I feel that way and I hope that you will vote that way. Hopefully that will happen soon. As soon as we meet our threshold, we'll begin to sign contractual agreements that will put us into motion. I think you recall back in other presentations that we talked about a 14-month program. Um, we would like to think that that program is based on two summers and one season, not two seasons and one summer. So the sooner that we can get that going, the better off we are. We have temporary facilities. If we wanted to go into the growth room with a fitness center, that is an option. We have also spoken to those, uh, to uh, Howard Slavin over at Le Jardin. Um, 
we have a couple of things to work out, but we anticipate the opportunity to use the pool. In the summertime, I'm certain that reciprocity will come into play with other, with other clubs. Um, in the wintertime, reciprocity is very difficult because other clubs are extremely busy. Uh, we will continue to work on opportunities. We'll, be, we'll have um, temporary facilities. We didn't think that we should create temporary facilities that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars because we think that that is very challenging financial for us. I will open up to questions. I thank you so much for your support. And we'll start right here. that if you take about 40 to 50% of the pool and make it for laps for the two to three people to do laps. I just went to several other country clubs. They're putting in wave machines that cost very little money, like under $20,000 for it. Two or three people to do laps in a 20 foot area. And they would be much cheaper put in, so a lot less space, and much more enjoyable. Sure. Well, thank you. So, so the question was based on 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 putting um, motors in the pool that will create friction, so that you swim in one place and swim against the tide. Um, we we did not look at that. Tell you the truth, we looked at a number of different pool op options, and I presented. Uh, I received seven new ones. I presented four to the boards and the committees. They ended up going back to the original. Now, the one thing that was presented to you in our first presentation, that top pool was, was um, two laps instead of three. We heard a lot of response about that. The last presentation, we had two separate pools. When we created three laps in that pool, that pool was 75 feet by 21 feet. That's the top area. When we, when we created that, it started to take away from the big pool. Okay? So we decided not to make it two pools. By breaking it out of the two pool system, we think we saved about $100,000, which is not represented in the numbers that we have today. You know, so that is, that is a plus for us. Most of the pools that we see today that are going in, and I can share with you, um, Ibis is separate, they're a separate pool. Uh, a number of the areas that we went to had separate pools, but they had a much larger space. Um, I know that Meisner is building their pool, and at the end of their pool is a lap pool very similar to this, they're the same, same architects. I know that Addison Reserve is in the middle of their construction, they're building something very similar to this. Remember that the lap pool process is a morning exercise typically. So we think there's a lot of adult space in this pool. And we think this pool is almost 5,000 square feet, same exact size as the pool that we currently have. So we feel that we created a resort style program, but also got the luxuries of having three laps for those that like to exercise. Thank you. Yes. I just got to tell you. I have been here for much, much of. Well, welcome home. It's nice I'm to have you here. Glad to get here. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't understand one thing. Take that one, please. I don't understand one thing. Uh, why are we doing this? Is it because our facility now is, is not sufficient for our uses, or? Is there a thing for marketing the uh, the club to, to sell the properties? And, and if so, how will that enhance our ownership as far as if we're selling? Sure. Well, I, I think the question is D, all of the above. Because there are a number of reasons why we took this project on. First of all, it was part of the 2014 strategic plan where the planning committee had this as, as a major project. I think that this project came up in 2008 as one big project, which included the clubhouse and everything. And they opted not to do that. So when 
our group and our boards got together, they decided this was first. We finished this project this summer, the last tail end of the of the uh, strategic plan was to enhance the pool area. We believe that we do not compete well with other clubs in the area that are similar to us when we have a 30 year old facility over there that hasn't been addressed in a long time. The pool is old, the building is insufficient and um, the structure is not sound and we believe that this is where we need to go to be competitive. Will it be a marketing program? Absolutely. I think 100%. I'd love to tell you that they'll build, build it and they will come. I believe that myself, but I can't tell you that. I can just tell you that if we don't do this, that we are going to have trouble creating better home values and selling properties in the future. Yes? On the numbers you put out, Yes. Two questions for that and a sure. general question. Okay. A million six for a million six that you have for uh, uh, professional governmental. Sure. What is that comprised of? So you have about four hundred thousand dollars in um, in architectural fees. You have I think two hundred and change in owners representative fees. You have permit fees. You have designer fees. Um, yeah, but that, that means you're talking permit. I mean, you're at six hundred thousand before permit designer fees. The other million dollars, what comprises that? I, I don't, I don't have it broken down in front of me. I wish I could tell you every line item. I don't, I don't have that. All right. But you know, this this line item hasn't changed uh, since our original presentations. No. Now the GC fee of seven million three eighty two. That's correct. Is that a fixed? Contract is that a cost plus contract? No, that is not a fixed contract yet. Remember that no, we have fixed fees or cost plus. We haven't negotiated a GMP with it with, because we don't have contracted. Uh, we don't have um, design drawings. We, this is this is just it. So we don't have construction drawings. So we can't go to a general contract and negotiate a price because this is long before that. But, what we want to do is go forward, sign a contract with our architects so they can create uh, real drawings that we can go and price out to general contractors to work on the, the price not to exceed. So we have to hope that when we go out based on the final plans the architect puts out, that we come in somewhere around seven to eight million dollars. What happens if the GC comes back and says it's nine point five million dollars? Well, that's a great question. So what we have done is asked you, the members, to approve a program not to exceed 1.5 million. 11.5 million. So it is, yeah, in that process, the board has got to, and, and myself, have to work into that number. We have worked with general contractors to try to get the most accurate read of the numbers. We have worked through our owner's representative that has done like six two-story fitness center facilities with pool expansions over the last five or six years inclusive. The architect has also done those at all the top clubs in the area. And they have all the financials from all the other clubs. We've talked to all the other general managers. We've talked about best practices. We've talked about what to avoid. And we've come up with these numbers. And we're presenting to you what we heard before was so many things have happened before, we don't believe in the number, so we worked very hard at creating a contingency that we thought would cover ourselves. So this is taking place in nine other meetings. Well, that gets into it, because the question is, will be gatehouses? Um, We're not going to talk about gatehouses. Well, no, that's a total different I know, but when, I look, when I look at a small project, that man over budget and behind schedule, and we look at this and we don't have we really don't have plans to go out for bids and budgets yet. And we're now going to approve, we're going to sign, we're going to go. We're going to then hire the architect to do whatever we're going to do. My fear is, and I've just involved enough construction projects, we're going to come back and say it's now $10 million. We're now $2.7 million higher than the projected year. We don't even come close to have the contingency needed. What happens? Well, we, what, what we are asking you to vote on 
is enough to exceed price of another million five hundred. We have done our due diligence on this. Okay, we can't look back at what happened with the gatehouses. And we've been talking about this for months. Okay, this is where we are. We are asking for your support. We're asking for your educated vote on what you think is best. We're not asking for you to talk about what happened in 08, or what happened before, or what happened in other projects. We're, we're long past that. Here we are. We're asking for you to vote. Hold on, we've got somebody in the back. I was just wondering if you could speak to the size of the bathrooms as far as that happens to be one of the worst things about the current facility. Is what is the size differential going to be and do you still plan on having the steam and sauna or did that go out with the spa? No, it didn't. Um, actually, each bathroom here is about 650 square feet. This is the ladies and this is the men. Okay? This is a steep, this is a sauna that fits five people. This is a shower. This is a steam shower that fits two people. Okay, the ladies have the exact same thing. And these bathrooms are much larger than the bathrooms that we currently have. As well, the bathrooms that represent the men's and ladies' locker room will not be shared by those people that are going to the pool because they have their own bathrooms right here. Remember, we discussed this, that those bathrooms are, are selected by code and what size they have to be based on what the square footage of the pool is. So that's how that is represented. Hey, Jen? Going on with the children's facility, yes. you, you increase the square footage. What is the age of the children that you're planning? Because obviously you have a kiddie pool and a playground. Sure. And what facilities are being used for the 10, 11, 12, those children that are living here presently or visiting? That's a great question. So I don't know how many of you have 12 or 13 or 14 year olds. I wish, I wish that they're not doing what my 13, 14, 15 year olds were doing when they were that age. Because there is no gathering them at a private club in a room to entertain them. So our program is set up here, okay, that we have the children's area, which we think is probably up to 10 years old. Pretty much, I think. And then we've created these lawns. This is pretty nice. I think this will, I'm not sure what we'll do with it, but, but could be movies, could be a little concert, could be kick the ball, not really sure what we'll do. They'll be very much oriented. Uh, Raphael will be in charge of those. Those will be like any fairway that we have. So we believe that that will be very nice. But this does not have a teen center because teen centers don't do well in most clubs unless maybe Woodfield with it, they're a huge tease. I know Marisol has a teen center that's very big, but they have, you know, 80 teens. So we don't have that, and it's very difficult to get teens to gather. The only reason why I asked that was when I was on the family committee and dealing with some of the other, when I was on the family committee, the one thing that we were looking at was to take the turn. Um, downstairs and screen it in and put a fold up ping pong table, air hockey, and a um, frisbee for the teens. Yep. So that's why I was just asking if there's anything for something like that. Yep, we, we don't have that in the plans right now. Um, so I would say no. But I, if you ask most clubs, that try to gather teens, they'll say it's very, very teens, difficult. You know, the eight, yeah. 12 or whatever. Sure, 12, 13 teens. So, who's next? Okay. Good. Talking, connecting in the past, talking sure. about the moment, present, the present, the present. Great, thank you. What happens if you find yourself at some point having to exceed and not to exceed? What is the commitment of the board, the management, in terms of how you deal with that? I think 100%, and I'm sorry to say, it falls back on you, but, but 
we believe that we've done the work that we need to do, more organized than any other project you've had here, more transparent than any other project you've had here. It has professional guidance all over it. We're locked in at this. This is what we're going to present. This is what we're going to achieve. We believe that. Um, I, I don't know what happens. We, we have 100% faith in this program. One, 11 million 500, we will not go over. The main deal that we did a long time ago was we opted to tear this everything down, to start from scratch, to lower the risk we had on surprises. Those are important things that have not been done here in the past. Hasn't been done. We always try to fix it. We could have fixed that mess over there. We opted not to. It was going to cost a lot of money. You wouldn't have been happy with it. It was going to have surprises. We don't believe we're going to have the type of surprises that can jeopardize the $1.5 million contingency that we have. Go ahead. The last time we had the meeting, I questioned whether we're doing this halfway, not expanding enough. And you said that we would have room to do that. However, with moving the fitness center 40 feet forward, you don't have the room on the sides for any expansion that we need. In addition, I believe you said this is only going to be 800 square feet larger than what we had? Was that's, that the... That's the upstairs. Okay. Yes. So, that's the upstairs. I understand that. Um, the so building is about 5,000 square feet bigger than the building that we have. Okay. So upstairs is only about 800 square feet. Okay. So I just different. heard that. Yes. Next question. Um, you switched it from a vaulted roof to a flat roof. Right. It saves a lot of money initially, but flat roofs cost a good amount more to maintain. Yeah, we think today the applications are much better than they were many years ago. Certainly, you know, I've been in Florida since 1979, was in the restaurant business for many years down here, and, and dealt with a lot of flat roofs. Today is better application than it used to be. But how much better is it? Is it going to cost us more in the long run? We don't than, think so. Okay, that is the question. Yeah. Third question, um, you talk about cutting the price down. If we do not spend all the money, are we going to be paying less per month? No. No, no. Because what I explained before, most likely, if by chance, we didn't spend the contingency, which we will do our best to not spend the contingency, then that means we will, we will borrow less money. You know, when we're borrowing less money, we have less interest payments. You know, so, so could it affect the term of the loan and how far we go? Right now we're planning on 12 years. Um, if, if we, I don't know what kind of number, say we, it was $700,000 left, then we borrow $700,000 less, then, then we'll find it at the end. Because we wouldn't borrow money to pay a percentage on it and then give people back money or change their payment. So it could change to the back end. For those people that were interested in paying one payment to pay for everything, would have to make some adjustment. Most likely we do a return on that payment based on how much money we saved. Um, let me just talk one second because you asked a question that I haven't responded to. We wanted to make sure, one, we don't think we've done this building down one bit. I think this building is designed better. Our architects think it's designed better than the first go around. You guys helped me make those decisions and helped our board and our committees make those decisions by your feedback. You know, we created this program based on the opportunity to expand. 
We have huge space here. Very expandable. We have huge space here. Remember, this is the pickleball course. And remember that originally we were going to move the pickleball course because this building came out here. We changed this. So the pickleball course stayed. We opted not to change the tennis court, which we thought we were going to make it into a hard court. And we were going to add two pickleball courts down here, which we opted not to do. That was a $200,000 savings to not do that just by redesigning the building. So that was very positive for us. The opportunity to expand this building, huge. We can come out this way. If we had to move a pickleball court, we could move it down. Either that or if we wanted to add pickleball courts, there's enough space for two pickleball courts here as well. Remember in our original plan, this basketball court was changed and moved north to south. There's still plenty of room for that. So we have great expansion opportunities down the road if we ever have to. Who's next? Okay. Okay, so I want to address more of the financial aspect of this. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm now looking at your ballot over here. If I do the math, the way it appears to me is you're saying that it's $399 a month for 12 years, which is 144 months, of which it comes out to be $57,456. A CFO is right behind me. So okay, that's good. He's the guy that's Okay, right. and then I read a little further down, and it says... If I choose to pay one time, that is the amount of $42,552 and some change. Right. When I do the subtraction, it appears to be the savings of $14,903 and some change if I pay all at once. Is that what I'm looking at? So somebody that can fork off that kind of money and save about $14,000. That's where it's big, but I have... And you know, eight and So everyone has to remember that there is currently a two hundred and fifty nine dollar a month payment that is left over from two thousand and eight that we pay every month. Okay, that we have that goes to two thousand and twenty three. So it's still got five years left. Okay, but we're gonna refinance that program. So wipe yourself with two fifty nine, your payment goes to three ninety nine or four hundred. What do we decide? So that's three ninety nine. So your payment goes to three ninety nine rather than two fifty nine. We don't have that in the plans right now. After five years, so is what it really is. No, but, but right now after five years, it's really you ask most clubs that they try to gather teams. Okay. Say it's very Judy. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Got five. Right. Well, Thirteen. Going back to the process. You had, I think, like 980000 for Good. Yeah, for Correct. Correct. purchases. Are you planning on putting state-of-the-art equipment and weights in, or is that included in that 980 or are you yes. using the same equipment that's in the center now? This price includes new gym equipment based on the knee. I'm sorry to say it's so, all back on you, but... But, you know, gym equipment, some clubs lease some work, some clubs purchase some, some, some clubs lease the things that you burn out, like more transparent uh, and any of the machines, you know, treadmills. Uh, as professional guys, this includes all options of new equipment, but not a computer selling so equipment. I, mean, I think this is what we're doing, some of the items that we're going to to achieve, and some of the other things that we that. You know, we spent almost $100,000 last year on equipment. I don't know what equipment will still be good by the time we get to it. So we have 100% sure we're evaluating that. But there is, uh, one can't remember the time, but there is a lot in there for old furniture, furniture for for the the we did for a long time. Furniture, furniture, and as we opted and uh, fit the chair, everything, yeah. and uh, to start from scratch. Yeah. The the of the the risk we had on the well, we exactly what the Those are the sort of things that have not been done. I don't know, but, uh, you know, when we're working with 
The only thing that has represented it. You're going to fix that mess so over here. I'll just not do this. It's going to cost a lot of money. Look, if you want to get half of those, it's going to have surprises. When they reopen the fitness facility, they are going to have the type of surprises and things that they can do. But I think I don't want to do that. I don't know. Contingency that we have. <clears throat> if you look at the upstairs area, I can honestly tell you, right now we have five treadmills. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh? I don't know if we'll ever need eight trip treadmills. We will have the space if we need it. You know? Uh, I don't know, David, how many electricals we have. We have a big step. Five electricals. So this has plenty of flexibility. Something we have is good. If, if it's not that we will replace it, we'll negotiate a deal for trade uh, on the whole program. So that's the upstate. We believe we have enough money set aside in that budget. That's the upstate end of the things here. The building is about 5,000. How much is the seven? So upstate is only about 100. Okay. So I just heard that. Next question. Um, you switched it from a vaulted roof to a flat roof. It saves a lot of money initially, but uh, we have 1.1 million dollars budget maintain. for all water in the area. Today, one the application is much better than the work many years ago. Certainly, I've been involved since the years. It's in the restaurant uh, business plan. Yeah. 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 Interesting enough, that last thousand flat roof. I think the today is better the application and it used ninety thousand dollars. But how much better is it? Is it going to cost us? Uh, we have a demo. Long I think the okay. everything. Okay, that is the question. Yeah. Third question. It was it was quite substantial. Once they pulled down, knock everything down, excavate, clean it up, and all the pads for for the next bit. Are we going to be paying less? No, Judy is not with me. Because what I explained before, most likely, if by chance we didn't spend the contingency, the rule of the law has to not spend the contingency, then that means we will, we will borrow less money. You know, when we're borrowing less money, we have less interest payments. So, so could it affect so, um, the loan or somehow? How so, I don't know if this keeps in now, uh, doesn't seem to get them to more, but I don't know. The one, so remember, $700,000 has been all the question of the dollars left. $15 million that we're trying to do that. Now, honestly, it should have been one to borrow money to pay a percentage on it and then get people back money. We have looked at it since I've been here. You know, good change of the value of those people. The financial size and the one training to pay for everything that they want. But that's what I see some adjustment. Most likely we would be presented to the board back in June. Based on how much I've been wanting to ship back in June. We'll talk one second because you asked the question and I haven't been able to do it. We wanted to create an ad hoc committee the ad hoc committee is going to make sure that one, we have enough money to pay for the ad hoc committee. We wanted to make sure one, into this, we don't think we've done this building down see this one day. I think this building is designed better. Our architects think it's designed better than the first go around. Many you guys helped me make those decisions and helped that board. So this is a seven weeks ago. We had a feedback proposal presented it to the board. Then we created this program based on the opportunity to expand. Well, we've been working on a few shades here. Very expanded. When they came up, we have a huge set of okay, let's try to do them together. Remember, this is the right ball courts. And we mentioned us originally, we were going to move the ball court, courts because they built it in a facility along with China is ready to go along the court. That they that can send for We have to come out and change the tennis court, but they said we were going to make it together on the last week. And we we're going to stand still and go ball courts down here. Christmas. Which we opted not to do. If that was a $200,000 savings to not do that, there's a just lot of people saying God's with an admission much different than there is. The opportunity to explain this investment and a huge capital income of the program had to move up. And they said we could move it down to be very applicable, because there's enough space. 
for two years the ball this year. I am as well. Remember, remember in our original plan, this you have this golf course change correct north of ass on the truck. There's still plenty of room for it. Look at that. So we have great we expansion opportunities down the road if we ever we said it. we think it's best we <laughs> should get this right. Okay. We want okay, the board so voted unanimously. No, we're going to vote. Sorry. We're going to vote unanimously. We're going to vote to move this forward to the next year. If I do the math, the way it appears to me is you're saying that it's $399 a month. To present for 12 years, which is 144 months, to make it a of which it comes out to be $57,456. Truly believe. Right okay. Yes. 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 And then I read a little further down, and it says, and if I choose to pay this. one time, that is the amount of $42,550 and some change. I'm not sure how when I do the subtraction, it appears to be the savings of 14903 and some change if I pay all the ones. But that's what I'm looking at. So that can fork up that kind of money. So I'm going to save about $14,000. I have a number of calls that are coming in to the last few days. Remember that about one member should have $259. A monthly payment, we should put as left over in the 2008 that we pay every month. So that, that's why we made that decision. Yes, that goes to 2023. So it's still got five years left. Okay, but we're going to refinance that program. So why you're selling me 259? Your payment goes to 399 or 400. Only the 444 members are living here in the boat on So if your payment goes to 399 rather than 259. But after five years, is what it really is 399. If you believe in it, you should but right now the five years vote is really hard for you. If you think you should wait to vote on the one membership, then you should wait. Well, no, okay, sorry. That was it. Who's next? Back to I really house. don't want this yeah. meeting to be a long measure, to be honest with you, because it should be. That's not what it's, it's intended for. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you planning on putting state-of-the-art equipment and weights in, and is that included in that 980, or are you yeah. using the same equipment that's in the center now? There's absolutely no sign it once they have a construction on our east. No. So, Contract with you know gym equipment, oh, the conceptual lease on now. But where we started, we call it conceptual lease. The thing you guys have changed that, like honestly, because we have feel that we have continued to make travel to make it better to a point that's already the most options. We can't make general contractors need to be a little push yet. I think that when we look at some of the high equipment barbells. And some of the other things, some of the sure. stuff we're going to try we to spend almost $100,000 last year. But we will also try to make sure we've got opportunities so that we have this saving along the way. We're sure we're going to be able to get back with our last projects and we can throw it out with it. But I don't remember exactly what the number is, but personal shopping in there. We're able to negotiate for a little bit of 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 a that worked very good on the last project. project. And we'll try to well, negotiate those. That's exactly what that's going to be. A percent of that number is for weight and fitness equipment. I, I know, but, you know, if we're, we're working with the owner's rep who has represented a number of clubs in the area that does this, we look at what other clubs are doing when they reopen fitness facilities based on the square footage. One of the things that we know, and I think our design, if you look at it, if you look at the upstairs area, I can honestly tell you, right now we have five treadmills. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't know if we'll ever need to treadmills. We will have the space if we need it. No. Uh, I don't know, David, how many ellipticals we have and all. No. We have the big stand, five ellipticals. So this has plenty of flexibility. Some of the equipment we have is good. If it's, if it's not, then we'll replace it. We'll negotiate a deal for trade uh, on the whole program. So we believe we have enough money set aside in that budget to handle the things we need. 
Yeah, the only other question is, is how much of the 7.3 million in the contract budget is for demo? And fill in the forms that are required to do that. Well, I think the only other question is, how much of the 7.3 million in the contract budget is for demo? We have 1.1 million dollars in the budget to take the store all water so the water area. I am happy with that call the pool, but I wish that you could see you all the other kids and the kids because uh, that's the last projection. Interesting enough, last five projects now, it's really growing good. And we listened to members and I had that in those films. But we did share that if by chance of every we signed a contract we went forward and spent eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars on getting everything ready so that we can get to a vote, knock everything down. Next what would happen if they decided to approve it for the next bill? Then we would be out the eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars that we spent and we would be running the bank. That is problematic. Our board evaluated all those opportunities and options. They opted to move forward and present this to you. So I'm sorry that that ship has sailed, but it, this is this is where we're at because we spent a lot of time. I hope everybody that's leaving goes to the growth room. We have a great day tonight. Absolutely, Please have a drink. Okay. So uh, I'm new. I think Mr. Stone has the has the microphone. But the one membership program has been questionable for 15 years. And honestly, it's not 15. Uh, we have looked at it since I've been here. We evaluated on the financial side, we looked at trends, we looked at what other clubs are doing, what they've done. We presented our numbers to the board back in June. We presented them to the membership back in June. The board was stuck with trying to make a decision. They opted to create a ad hoc committee. The ad hoc committee came into this only so the six or seven weeks ago, we had our committee Sunday the and we almost have twice as many people that come into the fitness center per year than we have that play golf per year. And golf, we spend a lot of money every year. So I can't tell you how much money we spend on golf. We spend a lot of money every year. I think that was the only thing that I was going to do together. I'm going to talk about our turn. Our attorney said, Tell me that's 300 times in the fitness. I have the sheets that show that we'll do 27,000 people that will visit the fitness center in 2018. He said, I think that's the airport. It's Thanksgiving. It's Christmas. It's Difficult because the POA is a club. There's a lot of connecting the dots with an amendment change, different than there is with the approval of an assessment and a, a capital program. And they said, You have to be very careful on this because if you are sued for any reason by any member, if you haven't done it 100% correct, then you're asking for trouble. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm talking with our attorney. One, I am by said, we think it's best because this right about we want 13 months ago in the industry, they hired me to come in and run this club. Board vote. And they had a strategic plan, and they wanted it professionally done, no professionally monitored, and they want somebody to carry so out the mission. We that's what they brought me in, and that's what I'm doing. To present the other thing, I should tell you, because that I agree 100 percent what we left with. That's why one membership has to has to go through. Really, really. That's why we're going to present the vote in January. That's why everybody here that feels that way should be working as hard as they can, not only to approve this. But also to approve one membership looking at it. And I believe we honestly we're think we're right. We can't survive with 250 golf members. I agree with you. But we can't survive when we come out of jail. We can't survive with 30 homes that aren't paying us. We can't survive with the whole We have got to honestly property 
that we should have focus with us. Not just have a property. I have a young one to help everybody here to, to help us do that. Days. Days. This, this is the vehicle. One membership. One membership is the vehicle for that. That's the protection we should do that we we'll have. But for all the other things that we have going on, I believe one of these that is But this is the vehicle that will get us there. Okay? We're going to vote one membership in, science. Guys, so let's see. Only the former are going to vote on Not the future. Not the people. Only you, the board, you members, are going to vote on this vote. If you believe it, you should vote on it. If you should vote yes. If you think you should wait to vote on the one membership, then you should wait. Don't hold board vote. We're okay. Don't hold board vote. I, I really don't want this meeting to be about one membership. I can be honest with you. It, it should be. That's not what it's, it's intended for. Go ahead. I'll get to you next time. I'm doing, but clearly not. I haven't been here that long, but from what everyone says in the past, that's been one of the Conceptual design. Now, when we started, we called it conceptual. I, you guys have changed that. Honestly, we talk about that. We have that photo going on the tomorrow. Make it better. And to a point where we're going to vote for a savings. You can't get general conscientious and go on for the just yet. Tonight, you can vote yes. Mr. Felton. Hi. I just wanted to say that I think that the board has been we will also try to negotiate an opportunity so that if there's savings along the way, and we did this from, you know, this we did this for our last project, we did very well with it, by the way. And Frank did an excellent job with that. We were able to negotiate a deal where if there were savings in the program, the general contractor was on our team trying to save us money, and at the end we split it. That was very good on our last project. We will try to negotiate those deals. Problematic. And, 
and a board evaluated all those opportunities and options. We're not redoing our homes. They opted to move forward to the next year's two years. So, which is bringing sorry that that ship has sailed, but perhaps this is, be this is where we'll have to be. Because, because we spent a lot of time. I hope everybody that's leaving goes to the growth room. We're going to have a great dinner tonight. Please have a great school. Okay. Here um, and then the 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 I don't play tennis. I want us to have the best tennis facilities that we can have for our members. Those that don't understand the value that our golf course brings to this community, whether you play golf or not, when you look out of your own back of your home and you see this beautiful facility that's here, that shows absolutely enhance the value of your home, your club, and your neighbors. So it's time that we became a neighborhood again. And for the next five years, or again, the price of dinner and a bottle of wine, we got it through out of our minds. We love this club when we walk into it. It was absolutely beautiful, and people watch it. Our gates, so our stuff, you know that our golf we course, we almost have twice as many people that come into the fitness it's center per year than we have that play golf per year. Excuse the expression. The golf, we spend a lot of money every year. That should have been nice. That is the only thing that I like to treat. Last time, we should now absolutely, absolutely do what we need to do. You want the more contingency? You got more contingency. I, I have a chance to show that we will do 27,000 people that will visit the fitness center in 2018. Uh, I think that's that important. We're spying it. We're 200 dollars a foot, 250 a foot, in what should be one of the finest communities that uh, that exists in the world. That's why we moved here 25 years ago. You know, know that so stop screwing around. Let's do this the right way as a community, have beautiful facilities, and let's move on and use we have one in the back there. One, I am going to have dinner tonight. We hope you'll enjoy us because uh, join us. Out. And uh, thank you all. Ago. I hope that you will vote. They hired me uh, to come in and run this club. Uh, uh, me and they had a strategic plan. And they wanted it professionally done, it's professionally monitored, and they want somebody to carry out the yes, mission. Yes, that's what I'm doing. It seems the other like thing I can tell you is that I agree with you. That's course. why one membership that has to be has to go through. That's why we're going to present this to you. That's why everybody who ever feels that they should be working as hard as they can. Not only because the number one thing we've got, but also to show one member that they didn't have to the number of the same life. We can't survive with 250 golf I agree with you. We can't survive. I don't know where we're going. We can't survive with the third that are paying us. We can't survive with the third We have to also do that. We have to have to have to have to have to have to have is to get the system to start to stack proper so that because interest rates are not the only to go down. Let's do that. We, we know that. This is the vehicle. One membership is the vehicle for that. That's the protection that we'll have. But for all the other things we have going on, I believe it's in what you say 100%. So this is the thing to work that we're going to see. Are you going into that now? We did it. It's a whole membership in the We did it. 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 We did it on it and potentially cut down the length of time that these houses are going to go. Instead of going 12 years, we'll go 10 years, 11 years, whatever it is. We'll keep the amount of savings. 
I, the board can evaluate that. We will talk about that at the next board meeting. But that vote is going in the mail tomorrow. And I recommend going and saving yourself uh, the stamp and go and fill it out your form tonight and vote yes. Mr. Feldman. Hi. Yes, um, I, I, like Sonny, uh, I'm biased as well, but I'm biased in a whole different way. I'm biased because for 25 years I've seen the value, uh, particularly in the last 10, when we had our last big economic decline and we were trying to be politically correct for everyone else. Um, and as a result, um, the values in this club are the lowest of any, and I'm going to try to call it first class club, um, uh, of any other club. Um, when you say we need to sell, we need to sell, but we need to sell at prices that are appropriate. There is no reason why Boca Grove, with the best location in Boca, why we literally, our values are in the toilet. And anyone who doesn't believe that is kidding themselves. This has been going on far too long. For those newcomers to the club who hear those who uh, periodically like to sit around and, and spout um, concepts that they really do not know about, like construction, like when instead of, in most clubs, when you knock it down and then rebuild, as opposed to trying to cheap out as we've done project after project after project, including the gates for those newcomers who hear about how much longer it took and how much more it took. One of the reasons is, is because we try to salvage the buildings, which not only have mold, but have all kinds of decay. We did it in this club, and we had half-assed rooms and half-assed space. And it cost us a fortune, and we ended up being in lawsuits with architects and builders, with all kinds of crap that was going on. Every single project that we did in this community, from knocking down the trees because it was the right thing to do, but no, it cost money, so there was that complaint, but we got the project through with our gates. Look how beautiful our gates are with our clubhouse, which we wouldn't have to have done that number of times if we would have knocked it down at the appropriate time. So everyone here, don't kid yourself. For the price of dinner and a bottle of wine for the next five years, you're not going to have a state-of-the-art facility. Not overdone, but what should we be done so that Boca Grove can be in its place again, in this city, in this community, in this county. When you talk to people and you say you live at Boca Grove, they don't talk about the things that they talk about at uh, the clubs. They talk about the fighting, the dissension, and the lack of product. We're not redoing our homes. The value of the homes continue to drop, which is bringing in those who perhaps shouldn't be living in Boca Grove in the first place because they bought the cheapest house that they could find so that their kids could go to the best neighborhood schools. But they hear and they buy and they don't fix, or if they do, it's minimal and our values continue to decline. Do we need young people, young families? We absolutely do. I don't play tennis. I want us to have the best tennis facilities that we can have for our members. Those that don't understand the value that our golf course brings to this community, whether you play golf or not, when you look out your, the back of your home and you see this beautiful facility that's here, that should absolutely enhance the value of your home, your club, and your neighbors. So it's time that we became a neighborhood again. And for the next five years, for, again, 
the price of dinner and a bottle of wine, we got to be out of our minds. We love this club when we walk into it. It looks absolutely beautiful, and people comment on it. Our gates are stunning. Our golf course we spent money on and redid. It's time that, that excuse the expression, that piece of shit building that's been here that should have been knocked down when we tried to fix it last time, we should now absolutely do what we need to do. You wanted more contingency? You got more contingency. You already have a debt for five years. Think about what you're talking about. A lot of people are talking, well, if I don't get um, this, I'm not going to vote for that. Who are you spying? We're $200 a foot, $250 a foot in what should be one of the finest communities that, but, that exists in both. That's why we moved here 25 years ago, and we watched that constant decline. You all know that that exists. So stop screwing around. Let's do this the right way as a community, have beautiful facilities, and let's move on and use them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to start to wrap it up. We've got a couple more questions. We're going to start to wrap this up. We have one in the back there. We do have dinner tonight. We hope you'll enjoy us and uh, join us. And uh, I thank you all. I hope that you will vote. Go ahead. I kind of forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Me too. I had no clarity as far as this monthly amount we're paying. Can you hear me? Yes, the monthly amount we're paying, yes. Uh, it seems to me that we, no matter, even though we reduce the cost, that monthly amount has stayed the same. Well, yeah, because we increased that contingency, that's why. So when we reduce the cost, we took up the contingency because the number one thing we heard from our membership was that they didn't have faith in the number. We don't have a handle, I assume, at this point as to what kind of interest rate we're going to And that's a determining factor in what we pay in. Yeah, and most of the most important thing we could do to protect that interest rate, I would recommend, is to get this thing approved as fast as we can. So that because interest rates are not going to go down, we we know that. But so. I mean, there isn't really a calculation as much time as we spend on this. I question whether there is any real calculation that's meaningful with regard to the monthly amount. Before we go into that round, we did sensitivity. Sir, we did sensitivity analysis on the interest rate, and we go up to close up to six percent and stay within the three ninety nine on that. But the sooner, as Michael said, the sooner this gets approved, we can lock in that rate and save money on it, and potentially cut down the length of time that the assessment's going to go. What happens if we get a better interest rate? What happens if we don't use up the contingency? Twice you've answered that question, Michael. Instead of going 12 years, we'll go 10 years, 11 years, whatever it is. We'll keep the amount of savings. Yeah, we'll reduce the period of time that you're paying the assessment, and anybody who paid up front will get a refund. Because we'll redo the calculation of the present value, and we'll get a refund. And unfortunately, in our project, thank you, everyone. And that's what's happening. Over time, 